The Messages app is the most popular app on iOS and Apple has treated it as such with this huge update for iOS 10. So let's start off with one of my favorite features, rich links. Now previously, when you would send a link in the Messages app, it would just appear as an address, right? But now in iOS 10, those links are expanded and now feature artwork and extracted titles from the website that you share. Now the same thing goes for YouTube links, except for YouTube links can actually play in line directly in the Messages app without leaving the Messages app. Same thing goes with Vine videos and other videos uh, that are compatible. But this is a really cool feature. I absolutely love this feature in iOS 10. Now let's talk about per contact read receipts. This is a feature that allows you to turn read receipts on or off for individual Messages app contacts. That is a really, really nice feature to have. Previously, it was all or nothing on a global level. Now iOS 10 also makes it easy to identify participants in a conversation. So you can see the participants right there at the top. If you tap on one, you'll jump right to their contact card uh, so that you can learn more about that particular contact. Now iOS 10's notifications have improved as a whole. Now you get these rich notifications that allow you to interact more fully with the app that sends the notification, the Messages app included. So when you 3D touch on a notification, you get this nice quick reply interface. This isn't your old school quick reply, this is brand new. You can actually view the context of the conversation and you can carry on a conversation right from the notification. So it doesn't dismiss after one reply. Now say you're in an expanded presentation view and you receive an incoming message for the current conversation that you're in. Notice the new message notifications right there on the avatar of the conversation participant. Now you also get much larger emoji, three times larger emoji in iOS 10 when you send three emoji characters or less. Now if you add a fourth, they're gonna go back to their normal size. So you gotta keep it to three or less in order to see those supersized emoji characters. If you add any text along with it, doesn't matter if you only have one or two, it's gonna revert back to the normal size. Now in iOS 10, you also get tap to replace. This is a really cool feature. So if you've written something and you wanna replace some of the words with emoji, just tap the emoji button and there you can tap each highlighted word and then replace like this. Now sometimes you'll get multiple choices and then you can just choose which one you want. Sometimes you'll just get one choice and it automatically will appear. And then you can revert back to text if you want to as well. Awesome new feature. Now one of the unique problems with text messaging is that sometimes it's easy to misinterpret what someone means when they send a message. But with iOS 10, you can 3D touch on the send button to open up the send with effect interface. And this allows you to add different effects to the messages that you send. So there's some really cool effects. Everyone knows about Invisible Ink by now, but there's others like Slam and Gentle to send a gentle text message so that it doesn't hurt someone's feelings or that you can show that emotion through your text, whereas otherwise you wouldn't be able to as easily. Now there's also full screen effects that you can select here. So you get balloons, you get confetti, you get the laser effects, you get the fireworks, and all these have sounds to go along with them. So they're really, really immersive when you send these to your uh, friends or family. They take up the entire screen. Uh, so it's not something you're gonna wanna do all the time because that could get very old, but if you sparingly, it's a very nice change of pace and it adds some additional flair to your messages. Now celebrations are basically full screen effects that take place automatically based on the keywords that you send. So if you send congratulations, you get this. Now predictive emoji at the top of the keyboard in the quick type bar was a feature at least in some of the betas, but it's been kind of finicky for me. So I don't know if it's just me or not. Let me know what you guys have found. When you double tap on a message bubble, you get this. This is called tap back and it allows you to quickly respond with one of six quick replies just like that. Great for those messages that don't warrant a full text response, but you would still like to indicate that you received the message. Now in iOS 10, you get the handwriting interface when you rotate your iPhone into landscape mode while in the messages app. So you just use your finger to write on the handwriting surface like this. And you can also access quick shortcuts at the bottom of the screen like this. Now, if you wanna delete any of those shortcuts, just tap and hold on a shortcut and then it'll go into edit mode like this. Now when your recipient receives the message, it'll actually appear as it's drawn. 
And another thing that eagle-eyed users will notice is how the ink settles into the transcript as if the ink was drying on a piece of paper. There's really a lot of attention to detail here. I don't know if you can see it or you can make it out from this video, but the ink settles in to the transcript as if it's drying. Really cool effect. Now, believe it or not, that was just the tip of the iceberg. Now let's tap the Chevron button so that we can reveal all the new options here within the Messages app. And each of these buttons correspond to the different drawers available. So let's start with the photo drawer. So this is the new camera and photo interface within iOS 10's Messages app. You'll see the live camera there. If you just tap on the viewfinder, it'll take a picture just like that. And that picture will appear in the transcript ready to send just like that. Now you don't necessarily have to tap the shutter button that appears below. You can tap anywhere in the viewfinder and that will take a picture and place it in the transcript. Now, if you wanna remove a picture, just tap the delete button in the upper right hand corner. You can also toggle live photos by tapping the live photos button in the upper left hand corner like that. To send, just tap the send button and there you go. Super simple, super easy. Makes it really easy to capture shots on the fly within the messages app without taking focus away from the app. That is a running theme in iOS 10's Messages app. Now, if you wanna change cameras, you can change to the front facing camera by tapping the camera button. Hey there, how you doing? In the upper right hand corner and switch back just like that. Now, if you tap on a photo in the transcript, it's gonna open up to the markup and editing view. You can tap the markup button in the bottom left hand corner to mark up photos. And of course you can tap the edit button. We'll talk more about that later. You can also swipe right to access the full camera and photo library. So if you want all of your photos from the past, you can quickly access those by swiping right and tapping photo library. Or if you want the full camera, just tap camera. Now you can also share recent photos. Just open up the camera drawer, swipe over to the left and you'll see all your recent photos. If you tap one of those, they appear right in the transcript just like that. And of course we can remove just like that. If you tap and hold, the photo opens to the markup and editing view. And if you just drag a photo to your conversation, it sends immediately, just like that. So several ways to send photos or prepare photos, good to know all of those. Now you can also mark up and edit photos. I sort of alluded to this earlier, but if you tap and hold on a recent photo, you get quick access to the markup and editing view. You can also swipe between different recent photos, just like that. Super simple, super easy. So now we're gonna tap the edit button here we're gonna crop this photo right here on the fly. This is one reason why I love the new Messages app in iOS 10 because cropping, editing, marking up photos is so easy without leaving the Messages app. So just tap done there. Let's go back and edit, add a filter. Just like that. That looks good. Tap done. Then we're gonna add some markup. We could draw on it, but let's use this little magnifying glass. Don't pinch. There we go. And again, running theme here, folks, all of this being done while still inside the Messages app. So I'm editing, marking up photos while still residing within the Messages app. Don't have to leave it all. Tap done. And right there, it's in my transcript ready to send. Just like that. Super simple, super easy. I love this feature in case you couldn't tell. All right, so now there's digital touch. Now, if you're familiar with the Apple Watch at all, you know what digital touch is. It allows you to send gestures, drawings to recipients. I'm gonna draw a tree right here. Let's switch my color. There we go. Simple, right? So I just tap the send button. You can see the drawing take place. That's how the recipient will see it when it arrives on their device. And digital touch messages are ephemeral, so they will disappear after two minutes unless you tap the keep button below the message. Now, if you haven't drawn a stroke, you can tap the color button to change colors and you can tap and hold on an individual color to access the color palette where you can go in and customize the colors that are available within the digital touch interface. Now, if you tap the little gesture section on the right hand side, it'll open up the digital touch interface to full screen, give you some tips on the different types of gestures. Of course, you can close those tips. You can draw just like that. You can switch colors just like that by tapping a color. You can, of course, access the color palette if you wish to do that. If you tap the chevron in the upper right hand corner, that reduces it back to compact mode. And of course, if you tap the chevron in the bottom right hand corner, you'll go back to the expanded mode where you can draw with much more room to allow your creativity to shine. You can tell I'm real creative, right? 
Now let's talk about digital touch gestures because really that's what digital touch is all about. You can access a list of gestures here. I'm gonna walk through each one of these gestures just to show you how it goes. So first gesture of course is just drawing. That is considered a gesture. Of course you have the taps, which are gestures as well. And you can change colors of course, if you wish to do that. And these will be sent to the recipient. And you can also press on the screen and that invokes a fireball gesture. The color isn't changed at all, depending on which one you choose. It is just a fireball all the time. Now, if you use a two finger tap gesture, you can send a kiss just like that. And a two finger tap and hold gesture results in a heart. A two finger tap hold and drag down gesture results in heartbreak. Very sad, very sad. But you can see all the messages here See them playing back like that. These are all gestures. Now let's talk about digital touch plus photos and videos because this is very Snapchat-esque. So I'm going to take a photo here of the ducks. But before I do that, I'm going to draw on the photo. Just like that. Now I'll take a picture. Snapped and ready to send. Tap the send button and it sends just like that. But it doesn't stop there. Of course you can use videos as well to send video digital touch compositions. So you can record a video and start drawing during your recording, or you can draw prior to recording a video, but you can see the recording is in progress. You get 10 seconds to record. That's terrible. That, that was just a terrible demonstration. Let's start over. <laughs> Let's start over because that was absolutely horrible. All right. So we're recording now. All right. I get 10 seconds. And I think that one's a little bit better than the last time. So we're going to allow this to play back. It'll play back and loop over continuously because it's a video. I'm gonna go ahead and send that. And when received, the video will begin playing back. You can see the digital touch gestures right there. I can tap it to load it up in full screen. And like I said earlier, it's gonna just loop over and over because it is a video. If it was just a normal digital touch message, it would play once and stop, but because it's video, it'll loop over and over and over. Now, of course, replaying a digital touch message that you receive just involves tapping on it if you wanna look at it in full screen. But if you tap the little X button in the upper left-hand corner, you can actually send your own message back quickly, right from the same interface, just like this. So that makes it kind of easy to reply to a digital touch message that you receive with your own digital touch message. Now let's talk about really the big feature, the biggest feature, the iMessage app store. This is huge for iMessage users in iOS 10. There's so much to this app store. First of all, we opened up the app drawer and there you'll see a list of currently installed applications. These are some of the default apps. So you get a music app, which basically allows you to send inline recently played music that can play back just like this for Apple music subscribers. It's a really cool little widget there or app I should say. And here's another app, the animated images app. If you tap the Chevron in the bottom right hand corner, you can open it up into full screen. And this allows you to view more of the app's content and really focus solely on one app at a time. All right, so now let's venture into the store itself. This is the iMessage app store. It is a separate app store from the normal app store, but still can contain apps from the normal app store. I know that can be a little confusing, but bear with me. There's also search at the top there. You have several tabs. You have a feature tab. You have a categories tab, which was just recently added. You see it, there's lots of apps already here, folks, but there are different types of apps. There are sticker packs, there are actual standalone apps that can tap into the iOS SDK. And many of these apps are standalone iMessage apps, which means they don't appear in the traditional app store. But some of these apps are actually extensions to already existing app store apps. So it can be a little confusing about which is which, but you really don't even have to concern yourself with all of that. You also get sticker packs and stickers are really a huge part of the iMessage app store because stickers can be made by anyone. You don't have to be a programmer 
to make a sticker pack. Now it certainly doesn't hurt if you are a developer because you can make some more advanced stuff. If you go to the manage tab, you can see a list of all of your installed apps. You also see automatically add apps. And as I alluded to earlier, these are apps that are automatically added from the app store apps that are already on your device. Sort of like Square Cash, for instance. Square Cash is a standalone app in the app store. It also has an extension and that extension appears here. Now, here's where it gets a little confusing. I'm gonna to try to explain this as best I can, but basically, if you have an app on your device, such as the ESPN app that has an extension for iMessage, it will always be listed here. So you have quick and easy access to enabling or disabling that particular application. So I've enabled ESPN and Square Cash and you see them pop up right here. Now I also have the Super Mario Run sticker pack installed. And if we open that up into presentation mode, you can see there are about 12 stickers in all. All right. And let's go to Square Cash. And this is Square's extension for iMessage. Really cool. So you can send money directly from iMessage. And the nice thing about being in this view, the compact presentation mode is that you can swipe between the different apps you have installed. If you're in the expanded presentation mode, you tap the Chevron here, you can't swipe between apps, but it does give you the luxury of being able to view more details about that particular app that you're in. Hope that's clear. All right, so let me show you one other concept here. We're gonna go back to the store, go back to manage. If I turn off the Mario Run sticker pack, Watch what happens because Mario Run is basically a standalone iMessage sticker pack. It doesn't have a corresponding App Store app. When I go back here, you're gonna see the ESPN is still there even though I disabled it, but the Mario sticker pack is gone completely. Now, if you wanna reaccess that, you actually have to go to your purchase tab here or you can just search for it in the iMessage App Store and re-download it. So you can see I have some apps that I've already purchased or installed from the iMessage app store. And this is just one way to re-download those particular apps that I want to re-access. So I got Game Pigeon there, really cool game package. All right, so we'll just go back, open up the app drawer again. You can see the installed Game Pigeon app really digging this app because it allows you to play all sorts of games. Now these are turn-based games. You're not gonna have any real-time games, but you do get really nice games like pool where you can shoot. And then once you're done with your turn, you can wait for the opponent and you keep going until you finish your game. Now let me show you how to reorganize the iMessage app drawer. You can tap and hold to go into edit mode and just drag like that. You can also tap the X button. That's another way to go about removing apps. And that does the same thing as toggling the switch under the Manage tab in the iMessage App Store. So here's yet another app, another turn-based game. And again, it's all about playing your move and then waiting your turn. All right, so let me share with you a couple of handy sticker tips. You can, of course, tap and drag a sticker up to a message bubble, but did you know you could resize a sticker like that? Did you know you could rotate a sticker like that? Maybe you did, maybe you didn't, I don't know. but something you definitely should know if you don't already. Because sometimes you need to place stickers in precise locations. Of course, you can also send stickers as standalone messages like that, but the real fun is when it comes to sticking them on text and pictures. Now, if you tap and hold on a sticker and you tap sticker details, you can actually see all of the stickers attached to a particular bubble. You could swipe to delete just like that to remove stickers if you ever need to do so. Now to conclude, what if you receive an iMessage message for an app that you don't already have installed? Well, you get this nice little attribution link and you can see the item, in this case, Memento, that relates to the message that was sent. So ladies and gentlemen, this was the companion video to a very in-depth walkthrough that we've posted on 9to5Mac. If you appreciate the walkthrough in the video, please leave us a thumbs up and be sure to subscribe if you haven't already. Let me know what you think in the comment section. This is Jeff with 9to5Mac.